I'm Raleigh Kane, and I'm traveling the country to show you the best of America. And it's right here in your own backyard. Spotlight America. Spotlighting America, one community at a time. We're tasting new food, going on new adventures, exploring new places, and meeting new faces. This is America like you've never seen it. USA. You're watching Spotlight America, and today we're doing a special Colorado edition in Crested Butte, Colorado. We'll see how a ski resort transforms to summer adventures, we'll do some zip lining, experience the annual downhill chainless bike race, and then we'll go to the wilder side at the Wilder Ranch, where I will learn how to fly fish from the captain of the U.S. fly fishing team, Anthony Naranja. And yes, there is actually a U.S. fly fishing team. And they're in training for the World Championship next month in Italy. Go USA! In Crested Butte, you immediately feel a difference that sets it apart from other mountain towns. There are no traffic lights and no chain stores. Just people who openly celebrate life every day with the genuine nature of the community and the pristine surroundings that capture you and won't let you go. We are here in Crested Butte, Colorado, named by Travel and Leisure Magazine as one of America's greatest small ski towns. Crested Butte. Well, you're loving the sunny day we have just yes. for you, right? It yeah. Well, Crested Butte um, settled back in the 1860s and was incorporated as a town in the early 1880s and primarily was um, brought to being because it's a, it was a coal mining or a mining town. So the style of the architecture here is Victorian. They always uh, use a lot of colorful uh, paints and uh, detail on the buildings, and that's what we try to maintain here. Crested Butte is a registered National Historic District. It's the eighth largest historic district in Colorado. The scenery here, it's kind of like in a bowl of mountains. It is, we like to say we're off the beaten path, but we're well getting to. Oh yes, I agree. In Crested Butte, your time isn't just about a visit to ski an incredible mountain. It's about being away from your other world, finding adventure in an unspoiled setting, surrounded by majestic peaks, wide valleys, and being connected to the culture and lifestyle that is Crested Butte. The slopes at Crested Butte Mountain Resort are renowned for world-class skiing, but in the summer, thrill seekers come here for another way to get down the mountain. Here to tell us about it is Erica. So Erica, how does this gorgeous mountain transform in the summer? Well, it turns into a, a summer resort. We've got downhill mountain biking, cross-country mountain biking in our Evolution Bike Park. We've got um, an adventure park with bungee trampoline and rock climbing. It's perfect for families, adventure seekers, like you said. So we have all these crazy bike racers around. What's going on? This week is Crested Butte Bike Week. Um, it's one of the oldest fat tire bike weeks to celebrate mountain biking and the history and enthusiasts, I should say. One of the uh, real popular events is the chainless downhill. I think I can kind of get it chainless downhill, but explain it. Okay, it's a downhill race and basically it's coasting. You've got no chains. Coasting. Um, yeah. <laughs> More like. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're doing it. I am. Yes, I am okay. a participant. First of all, I think you're crazy. Very excited. Um, do you have any like? harsh injuries from past races? Well, a couple scrapes on the elbow, but nothing too out of hand. So Crested Butte has the crazy chainless downhill mountain bike race, other mountain bike races. They have the 18-hole miniature golf, the zip line, and I heard you mention something about bungee trampoline, which I want to do it. That's Can we do you. it? We got it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to get serious with trampolining, extreme bungee jumping. <laughs> Lift me ropes. I'm not getting very high. She's gotta jump real hard for me. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, my God! <laughs> 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 
Butte, Colorado, U.S. All right, now we're going to check out the lift, go on a little scenic tour right. here. Uh, we're right here at the base of the Silver Queen, and it's a good little ride. Let's go check out the Silver Queen. A picnic at 11,000 feet. The Silver Queen chairlift at the base of Crested Butte Mountain Resort in Mount Crested Butte whisks you up to 11,400 feet. Sightseers can hike to the 12,162-foot summit or stop for lunch and take in the stunning scenery. Does this work for you? I mean, I know we don't really have any great views here, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not too shabby, is it? <laughs> um, we're surrounded by Crested Beauty. This is so gorgeous. So over here, this is Paradise Divide. We've got um, Red Lady Mountain or Mount Emmons, it's also called. And then over to the right here is the Elk Mountain Range. So what's the elevation here? Right here, we're probably at 10, 5, 11,000 maybe. Uh, the peak up there is 12,162 feet above sea level, um, and you can actually hike up there. There's a 45-minute hike you can take. and so you can get to the tippy top? Tippy, tippy top, and there you've got 360-degree views. And it's almost July. I'm in a tank top, but yet there's snow. Like, we could have a snowball fight. We could. Do you want to? Yeah. Snowball fights in July! Yeah. <laughs> All right, Erica, thank you so much. You're this welcome. is gorgeous up here. <laughs> Let's go check out some more of beautiful Crested Butte. I'm getting ready to fly down the mountain on the first of five zips. I got my hard hat, my protective eyewear, my um, ropes, and my protective moccasins. So I am ready to roll. Platform or... Here we go. Trusted my life and Phil's creative knot tying skills and belayed down. It was great. This is one of those spots in America that is a true slice of our country that you have to come and see. It's absolutely gorgeous. In Crested Butte, you're not just going to ski a great mountain. It's about being away from your other world. You're surrounded by majestic peaks, wide valleys, and being connected to the culture and lifestyle that is Crested Butte. In the wintertime, Crested Butte is known as one of America's best small ski towns. But in the summer, people come from all over to see the bike races, the music festivals, and of course, the blooming of the wildflowers. It's so fabulous because um, I've seen a huge resurgence in the last 15 years of the gorgeous gardens in town. And what we were doing, I lead historical garden tours for the Wildflower Festival. And a lot of seeds have been taken from the wild and replanted here and they grow and they bloom. It's a very colorful, very vibrant uh, community. And uh, obviously, you know, a lot of the people live here because of the surrounding nature, because of the wildflowers. And, and we have seasons and and pulsing wildflowers. It feels like right, you know, you get into town, but you're still out in the country because it's, it doesn't feel like, oh, town, it's like it's separated, it's kind of all together. It still has that natural, like all the flowers. And well, the natural and landscapes are so incredible, yeah. and we are at the end of the valley. There's a lovely book called Where the Road Ends. We are where the road ends. In the winter, you come up here and you turn around and you go back because you can't get over Kepler Pass, mm -hmm. and you can't get on up to Gothic unless you're on skis or on, in a snow. And it's just like nestled in these amazing mountains. We're in Crested Butte, Colorado during the Wildflower Festival. We're seeing it on the garden tour by Horse and Buggy, which has been wonderful. Ah! 
Yeah. <laughs> we took a little pit stop here at Peanut Lake. These are some of the old mining um, ruins and leftovers from the late 1800s. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. I mean, we're just a couple miles outside of the quaint historic town, yet we can get out here in complete nature, in paradise. This is one of those spots in America that is a true slice of our country that you have to come and see. It's absolutely gorgeous. Bob, can I have your hat? Yeah. <laughs> like Lo said, people move here for the winters, but they live here for the summers, and I can absolutely see why. From the flowers, to the biking, to the music, it's such a fun, active, fit, quaint, historic town that people from all over come and can't get enough of. And Glow, you're quite a wildflower yourself. <laughs> Thank you for showing Thank us you. around. Thanks Trust for coming. Trusted View, Colorado, USA. It's going down 7.4 miles of dirt roads, and we got all these crazies that are going to race down it. There's no chains, no brakes, Flintstone feet style brake, I guess. Um, we got some lampshades here, some guys. We got a guy in a like a speedo. Uh, yeah. Who knows who's going to win? Are you going to win? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The bagels help make you heavier. Chainless bike race. We're here with someone crazy. We got Justin. He's crazy enough to do it. So I can see you have the eye of the tiger. You're zoned in. You know it. You're going to get first. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna really if you're not first, you're last. Yeah, that's right. All right. So can we put a camera on you so we can see the action? Oh, yes. We're going to show you All some right, action. Awesome. Here we go. All right. Let's Give us some it. cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. We'll see you at the bottom. If you're not first, you're last. All right. Place. All right. We're at the beginning of the. Chainless Race 2011, here we go. And it's going time! Go time! Oh! Oh! quiet and beautiful but at the same time you almost feel like you're stepping back in time absolutely and that's that's what we're hoping for here it's it's quite a playground let me go see what's over there because my, my understanding is there's some big fish in the dream stream let's go let's do it i love you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you got it <laughs> immersed in Rocky Mountain beauty with endless miles of national parks, awe-inspiring canyons, and land filled with legacy and beauty. History isn't just a thing of the past, but a way of life, like at the Wilder on the Taylor. Since 1910, the Wilder on the Taylor has been a working ranch but since then, it has become a favorite getaway destination spot for those who seek the ranch life, but on the wilder side. I'm here with Brad Willett from Wilder on the Taylor. So tell me what makes this place so special. Well, thanks for coming, first of all. We enjoy having you Thank out here. Thank you. And clearly, the open space, everything you see, is what originally drew me to this property. I've always had a passion for fantastic real estate developments and a huge passion for the outdoors. And to me, this is the best of both. So tell me a little bit about the history of this place. 
Well, the history here at Wilder is quite extensive. It was originally established as a working ranch back in 1910. And what was particularly important to us when we talk about this as a development was to maintain that status and the history of this place and preserve the natural beauty of the land and keep the status of a working ranch. I've noticed that it feels like we're in the middle of nowhere and it's so quiet and beautiful, but you know, Crested Butte's right over there, Gunnison's right over there, so you're just a couple miles off the highway, but at the same time, you almost feel like you're stepping back in time. Absolutely, and that's, that's what we're hoping for here. It, we've got great access with the Gunnison Airport, and we're only 15 miles from the resort town of Crested Butte. And you know, you really feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. We're on 2,100 acres, surrounded by virtually 2 million acres of national forest. So it's, it's quite a playground. This ranch is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the mountains, the Taylor River running through, the history of the cabins, it's very peaceful. No, we agree, and we're so fortunate to have two miles of the Taylor River here at Wilder. It is truly one of the premier fisheries in the United States. Matter of fact, we have two guys on property right now that happen to be members of the United States fly fishing team. They are training for the World Championships in Italy next month. Are you kidding me? No. I have always wanted to fly fish. Do you think they could teach me a couple of pointers? <laughs> I don't think they'd mind at all. Let's go fly fish. All right. The Taylor River is known worldwide for some of the best fly fishing around. Anglers from all over come to challenge their skills on this river. And I'm here with the creme de la creme of fly fishing. We have Anthony and Devin over here who's showing you his skills. And I'm trying to stand. <laughs> this water is cold. The temperatures of the water are about 40, 48, 49 degrees. So as we stand nice here in this high water that we're on on the, uh, the Taylor River, this is, this is flowing about triple of what it normally does. So where we're standing at, normally we would be about maybe shin deep. And, and unfortunately, we're in some pretty high water. But as we get prepared and we stand and, and hopefully teach Riley how to uh, how to stick these fish, and there's some big fish in the tailor. I've been told that there's a, a stretch of water in this particular ranch that they, they call here on the Wilder Ranch the Dream Stream. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go see what's over there? Because my understanding is there's some big fish in the Dream Stream. Okay, so the Dream Team is going to take me to the Dream Stream to catch some real monsters. So let's go. Let's do it. Anthony, what do I need to do differently besides sweet talking the fish? Well, the sweet talking is not working very well. <laughs> because they so know I'm lying. They, they know you're lying. So we gotta we gotta go to plan B. Okay. Plan B, we're gonna go back in, we're gonna get real stealthy. Okay. And we're gonna make the most perfect cast that we can make. Okay. And I think if we can do that, I think we're gonna be pleasantly rewarded. Or maybe I could just learn to fish and catch one. Or or <laughs> I don't know, that okay. one sounds pretty good. <laughs> Bam! I did it! <laughs> so I'm going to Italy now? You're going to Italy. Can I kiss That's, this fish? You better. He's like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Kissed you back again. Yay, Fantastic. fish. Okay. Can we so, eat him or should we put him back? I think we should put him back. Kind of nice. Can I put him back? Some Free Willy! Anthony, thank you so much. I finally caught my first fish fly fishing. But let's go back, eat some dinner, and tell some fish stories. You got it. That one was at least this big, right? OK, you got it. I'm here enjoying the beautiful Colorado sunset, which I can never get tired of. I've been on the Taylor River all day fly fishing. Now it's time to have a little something to eat, tell some fish stories. Thank you guys so much for teaching me how to fly fish today. It was a little frustrating at moments, but you were patient with me, and we finally kind of caught a fish. We definitely caught fish. You caught fish? On my own, Absolutely. all by myself. Absolutely. Yeah. I was glad to help. Thanks glad for help. your help. <laughs> and the beauty they of- They were like this big. They were at least that big. Yeah, I don't even bigger. know. If, yeah. My, yeah. I don't know so, that your arms can really yeah. even reach that way. not even- I introduced in a rough way. Well, you know, with, with no help from neither you or, or myself, I think you did that all by yourself. Thank you. So, you yep. know, your spot in Italy is, is being helped, for sure. Thank you. <laughs>
you know, one, one of the things for us is as we compete and we go overseas, we get to meet so many unique individuals and to come to a place like this and be able to train and, and fish, but teach people and get people involved in fly fishing because so many people get involved in fly fishing for a number of different reasons. There's so much more depth, there's so much more meaning in fly fishing to the everyday personal um, things that we take away from our professional lives that we can take and, and come to a place like this and fish on such a fantastic fishery. Hopefully you saw the uh, the the life that's giving back to you as you're as you're fishing out there throwing, I throwing it. flies. You did kiss it. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and I he did. kissed you back. He so did. you know life was responding in a very positive way for you. So um, we were excited to spend some time with you to, to show you. You were a great teacher. This is not about flies, it's not about rods, it's not about the equipment. As much as our sponsors would love us to say, hey, I want you fishing this rod and I want you fishing this line, that's great, we need that. But as I go and I look for the strong competitors, I look for the strong people getting into fly fishing, one of the things that sets Devin and sets myself and sets these guys apart is their ability to believe in what they're doing and, and, and have that somewhat blind faith knowing, hey, I'm gonna go into Italy, I'm going to waters that I've never fished before, but you know what, I believe that I can win over there. Good luck in Italy, you too, Devin. Thank you. I hope you guys, well, you will bring home the gold. We will bring home gold. Let's go USA. I can never get tired of Colorado sunsets. I mean, the mountains, the pink, the purple. This is one of my favorite spots in America. There's lots more to see though.